Hey everybody, it's time for more Shakespeare. It's Monday Shakespeare Day. Um, yes, I've been looking forward to this day because this is one of the most important scenes that we're going to be talking about. Uh, two scenes. Um, uh, one that uh, is often done wrong, almost always done wrong, and when you do it wrong, it ruins the entire play. But first, before we get to that scene, uh, we're going to pick up with... Gotta use my glasses here. Uh, act one, scene six. Um, so when last we, we left it, Duncan screwed over Macbeth uh, by naming his son to be uh, the next king, breaking with hundreds of years of Scottish tradition. Macbeth is pissed off and he's decided to kill the king. So we meet uh, Duncan and company, the royal retinue, has journeyed uh, to Macbeth's castle, Inverness is the name of the castle, and he's arriving, and he immediately uh, reveals himself again to the audience, to the Elizabethan audience, as a fool. And he says, This castle hath a pleasant seat. The air nimbly and sweetly recommends itself unto our gentle senses. Now, every, the whole audience knows that the guy is going to be killed. Everyone knows the story of Macbeth. This is often a laugh line, and that's just fine. In fact, it's best if it does get a chuckle from the audience. Uh, and hopefully, uh, they're thinking, what a fool. He doesn't see this coming at all. Again, to an Elizabethan mind, a king is not a warrior. A king fights with his mind and his intuition. A, a, a king needs to be ruthless and out for his own country and the safety of his countrymen and nothing else. And he's supposed to be able to see right through people. He's supposed to be able to read people like books. Uh, he's supposed to be well-learned. He's supposed to be well-read, well-educated. And he's supposed to have a mind like a rapier. And so uh, Duncan... <laughs> is 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 just not the Elizabethan's idea of a good king. Now, this brings up um, a point, which is that, so in Elizabethan England, it is a hereditary crown. Uh, so they have a peaceful transition of power, so to speak. So when the king or queen dies, their son or daughter takes over the throne and it's peaceful. Whereas in Scotland, when the king dies, there's civil war, and everyone fights for the new crown, uh, and is pandemonium. Uh, so the Elizabethans just think of Scotland uh, at this time, uh, in 8th century Scotland, as just barbaric, and they need to modernize. So 1680 is when the play is, is, is written, and this play is set in uh, 8, 860, something like that. <laughs> So they're looking back in time and they're just thinking, these people, these Scottish people back then, they're just, they're just barbarians. Um, so just keep that in mind. So um, the, this scene is a fairly quick scene. Uh, basically, uh, Lady Macbeth greets uh, 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 the royal uh, group uh, and welcomes them into the castle. And that's basically it. Just kind of uh, letting people know that uh, the king has arrived. So the next scene. I'm going to read some of this. I'm, just, I'm going to read you the whole scene because uh, I think it's important. So this is the scene where uh, they're throwing a banquet for Duncan. Everyone's eating and drinking and having a good time. And Macbeth leaves the banquet. And he, uh, he goes into another room and starts talking to the audience, telling them, look, man, I'm thinking about this and I cannot think of a good way to kill this guy. It's just not politically feasible. He's too well loved. I don't think I'm going to do it after all, actually. I want to do it, but it's just not a good idea right now. His wife comes in. He tells her, look, I've changed my mind. She just go, goes off on him. Uh, and as we've discussed, uh, the misogynistic approach to this scene is to have Macbeth browbeaten by his evil wife. Uh, and so now we explain why Macbeth is uh, going to walk toward hells because he's weak in his marriage. He doesn't wear the pants in the family. That's the problem. Uh, I absolutely disagree with this take. Uh, it undercuts Macbeth. It uh, weakens him, which you, you really don't want to do. You want to you make sure the audience is 
behind with Beth as long as possible. Don't want to do anything to corrupt that. Um, also, it's just not in the text. Uh, I think they argue like two criminals and they go after each other like two criminals, but I don't think it's right in the text. Macbeth doesn't get browbeaten. And so I'm going to read this for you the way I think it should be played, the way I would direct two actors uh, to play the scene. So here we go. Scene seven, Macbeth's castle, torches, uh, enter Macbeth. If it were done, when it is done, then twere well it were done quickly. If the assassination could trammel up the consequence and catch with his surcease success, but that this blow might be the be-all and end-all here, but here upon this bank and shoal of time, we jump the life to come. But... In these cases, we still have judgment here that we but teach bloody instructions which being taught return to plague the inventor. This even-handed justice commends the ingredients of our poison chalice to our own lips. He's here in double trust. First, as I am his kinsman and his subject, but strong both against the deed. Then, as his host, we should against his murderer shut the door, not bear the knife myself. Besides, this Duncan hath borne his faculties so meek, hath been so clear in his great office, that his virtues will plead like angels, trumpet-tongued against the deep damnation of his taking off. And pity like a naked newborn babe striding the blast, or heaven's cherubim horsed upon the sightless couriers of the air shall blow the horrid deed in every eye, that tears shall drown the wind. I have no spur to prick the sides of my intent, but only vaulting ambition, which o'erleaps itself and falls on the other. Enter Lady Macbeth. How now? What news? He has almost supped. Why have you left the chamber? Hath he asked for me? No, you not, he has. We will proceed no farther in this business. He hath honored me of late, and I have bought golden opinions from all sorts of people which would be worn now in their newest gloss, not cast aside so soon. Was the hope drunk wherein you dressed yourself? Hath it slept since? And wakes it now to look so green and pale at what it did so freely? From this time, such I account thy love. Art thou afeard to be the same in thine own act and valor as thou art in desire? Wouldst thou have that which thou esteemest the ornament of life, and live a coward in thine own, in thine own esteem, letting I dare not walk upon I would like a poor cat in the adage? Prithee, peace! I dare do all that may become a man. Who dares do more is none. Well, what beast was it then that made you break this enterprise to me? When you durst do it, then you were a man. And to be more than what you were, you would be so much more the man. Nor time, nor place did it here, and yet you would make both. They have made themselves, and that their fitness now does unmake you. I have given suck and know how tender it is to love the babe that milks me. I would, while it was smiling in my face, have plucked my nipple from his boneless gums and dashed the brains out had I so sworn as you have done to this. Uh, if we should fail, we fail. But screw your courage to the sticking place and will not fail. When Duncan is asleep, where to the rather shall his hard, where to the rather shall his day's hard journey soundly invite him, his two chamberlains will I with wine and wassail so convince that memory, the warder of the brain, shall be a fume, and the receipt of reason a limbeck only. 
when in swinish sleep their drenched natures lie as in a death what cannot you and i perform upon the unguarded duncan what not put upon his spongy officers who shall bear the guilt of our great quell bring forth men children only for thy undaunted metal shot should compose nothing but males. Will it not be received when we have marked with blood those sleepy two of his own chamber and used their very daggers that they had done it? Who dares receive it other? As we shall make our griefs and clamor roar upon his death. I am settled and bend up each corporal agent to this terrible feat. Away! And mock the time with fairest show. False face must hide what the false heart doth know. Okay, so I hope that that reading, they go at each other. They're arguing. They're definitely arguing. She's trying to get him to kill the king tonight. He is definitely telling her, I think, it's very clear in the text, shove off, bite me. I'm not taking it. I don't, I'm not taking your advice. Uh, uh, you're, you don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> uh, and then when she says, this is how we're going to get away with it, he turns on a dime and just goes, oh, baby, you are so hot. Now, in Elizabethan time, him saying, bring forth men, children only, for thy undaunted males should compose nothing but males. Uh, we just got to give, uh, well, you don't have to, but I give over to the fact that um, in 1680, it was a more sexist culture. And so that kind of compliment, uh, is the kind that Macbeth cho chooses. Um, he's just, it's, it's a sexist way of saying, God, honey, you're badass. So if I was to update, you know, the play and not use the original language, I, I would say something like, you are so badass badass you're a valkyrie something like that uh uh but that's what shakespeare wrote um he was in his own time uh but anyway uh that i think is how to play the scene and not screw up the whole play uh you have to be rooting for these this this couple and you see them argue argue and then resolve it and get back together again and they're going back uh into the banquet and they're gonna smile while they eat, fully planning that evening to kill the shit out of Duncan. And we will pick it up there next week.